everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Sarah, the Rainbow Hearted Witch, and today we have Donna with us. You know, what would you what would you want people to know um, uh, about? So, when you're in the five D energy, you're more uh, connected, right? What does that mean? They, they, you have a heightened intuition level of intuition. Um, you recognize synchronicity better. Uh, you, when you meet somebody new, you recognize them as the, you know, person that's a good fit for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a, a soul connection, right? Exactly. Um, a lot easier to, you know, because you're at such a, you know, vibrate so much higher that you uh, have more of these tools available to you more often. Well, when was the last time you talked about yourself? Because I kind of had a feeling it it's not just really all about me, but it's like, uh, what about you? Talking about myself. Oh, um, I, I see. I, I like talking about other people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's the journalist in me. I, I prefer to hear what other people's stories are than my own. <laughs> All right. There's inspiration there too. But if you would like me to share something, I can. <laughs> no, it's not a big deal. Okay. I was just wondering when the last time your viewers got to know a little bit more about you, but you know, you show up in all this too. Yeah. You know, with the give and, give and take. Did you watch my last video where I talked about what it's really like to live in the country? No. Oh, I talk about myself a lot in that video. It's all about my perspective and it's, it's, yeah, it talks about my struggle like that. It's, it's difficult. I, I'm having a hard time adjusting living in the middle of nowhere. I, I don't think I could do it. Well, I could if I had to, but it wouldn't be my choice. Yeah, I, I miss you know, how you're saying like, you know, the energetic, energetically being around 10,000 people, like how it affects you. But at the same time, you know, how you're talking about how you emit so much energy. And I know that I do the same thing, have a lot of the same, you know, uh, I'm definitely a vortex like you were talking about earlier. So not only do I give off energy, but I wouldn't say I'm an energy vampire, but you get energy without even really realizing it, but not in a negative way. There's a way to absorb energy that's around you that's not negative. Does that make sense? So, um, I think that's not, a truth for everybody. Yeah, not being around people, um, you have to draw inspiration and you have to draw energy um, it's just different. It's a different experience. And um, when you, even though we don't live in the middle of nowhere, like we were going to live in St. John's in the middle of nowhere off the grid, 100%. And I'm so happy we didn't do it because the only way we would have even had internet is if we did Starlink, um, you know, uh, Elon Musk's satellites oh man that's no. too far off the grid yeah yeah so living here is kind of like a compromise between that and like living in phoenix but yeah it's still um it's still pretty isolating it's still pretty isolated and in the middle of nowhere and it's just a whole different way of living as a Gemini, you know, I get, I get you, right? As a Gemini, um, we have that, that dual personality that requires us to spend some time, not all the time, but some of the time with people. Exactly. It's necessary. Yes. And so when you're isolated like that, uh, it, you know, that's a core, uh, core thing that we need as a Gemini. And to deny that, um, is painful, right? So when you're too isolated out in the country like that, it's like, oh man, where I come from out in the middle of cow country in uh -huh. Michigan, uh -huh. um, I'm surrounded by family or I was surrounded by family. And so when I go back, um, even though there's, you know, six houses on a, an entire mile, 
you know, four of them are going to be your cousins. <laughs> so, you know, you, you get a ton of people to talk to. You know, you're getting together on a Friday night or a Saturday night or whatever, right? So, but when you're out in the country, not surrounded by family or a lot of uh, people that you know, um, that's really tough as a Gemini. It is. It really is. I love, you know, Phoenix and Tucson because there's so much community, the spiritual, like light minded people. And um, even though you would think there'd be a lot of that in the country, if there are people who are into spirituality in the country, they really just want to like stay to themselves. And I can't do that. Like, I'm too much of a social creature. So, you know, yeah. I'm glad that Tucson isn't too far away and I can just, you know, go to the ninth house or, you know, go have some good Indian food. <laughs> yeah. And experience, you know, um, my fellow humans because, you know, as much as the world is a scary place and it's like, oh, let's get away from people and but at the same time, we need people, you know, people are amazing. And um, that's why I like doing this, because I love to get to talk to people and go more in depth and, and get to hear people's stories and learn about them and, you know, see how they're living on the spiritual path, you know, nine to five, you know, like your day to day, because spirituality isn't just about going to workshops. And it's not just about like, you know, right working or taking care of people or self-care it's really you know a lifestyle so how do you embody that and i love learning how different people embody it in different ways you know i i've just been blown away in the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. literally the last two weeks on all the different ways that spirituality exists mm -hmm. that i was completely oblivious to um, right here in Tucson and uh, you know, all these concepts and belief systems and how people practice their spirituality, right? There's thousands and thousands and thousands of ways that these individuals practice their, their beliefs. And it's, uh, it just blows me away that there's so much of it right here in Tucson. And I've been here for four years and I'm just now finding it. Well, COVID killed it. Yeah. You know, we, we had a two year pause there, but, um, and, and once you get into it, it, it pops up everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, it just shows up everywhere. So I guess it's the right time, you know, to, to discover all this stuff. And, um, there's just so many beliefs out there that I'm just, I'm like, you believe what, what toad medicine, what? is that, you know? And uh, so I started taking a look at that was one thing that hit my radar over the last couple of weeks. And, uh, and I'm thinking, my God, there's just so much we don't know. Yeah. There's so much we don't know, but if you're open to it, spirit will find a way to bring it in front of you. Mm -hmm. And if you're a yes making machine, like I am, you know, where I just want to say yes to everything. And so I trust the universe is just going to bring me things I can say yes to. Right. Yeah. You know, don't bring me crazy stuff. Just only bring me the stuff I can say yes to. Um, and, and all this weird stuff starts showing up and I'm like, you know, it's kind of scary. This, some of this stuff. And, you know, if you can set aside the fear um, and know that, you know, the universe brings you things because you're ready for it. Um, you know, you can take a, a deeper look at something with the understanding that it's there because it needs to be there. You know, that knowledge is there because it's time for you to know it. But there is also like that fine line of saying yes to everything and being open, but also using your discernment because I've run in along the of way course. of, um, like I went to this, um, psychic fair in Phoenix and I met this amazing healer and the healing session was amazing. And, um, the psychic message she told me was like, so right on then and, and like nobody else. And I was just like, wow. So I brought my friend and we went to this like seminar and they locked the doors and oh. it was total like cult vibes you know, give them all oh, your man. money and go like live. And I, we were just, my friend and I were looking at each other like, oh my gosh, like, 
I wasn't really scared because I was like, no, you can't do anything to me. Like, I don't give you permission and I'm not going to hand over my money. But right. just looking around, you could see the people like just eating it up. And I'm like, it's a total cult. Like, I don't care what spiritual gifts you have. I'm not going to give you all my money and like go live on this commune with you. Um, and just the rage that this, the leader had. Um, uh, yeah. And people were eating it up. I mean, we la we were just like, okay, we got to go. So can you go and lock the door? And, and we left, but yeah, you just, you still have to use a discernment because sometimes things will cross your path, not for you to say yes, but you to be like, this isn't for me. <laughs> yeah. And, and for, for me too, it's, it's just like, you know, that's interesting. Uh, but it doesn't resonate with me at all. Right. You know, as if you want to go explore whatever it is, have at it. It's just not something that interests me. And that's, you know, I think that's part of the spiritual path too, is, is learning discernment because yes, it's just like anything, just because it's there and it's available, it may not be for you. It may be for you to say, that's great. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. <laughs> but this isn't for me. <laughs> I I absolutely agree with that because there's just so many thousands of ways that people can express their beliefs and and you know their you know let their their spirit shine right. and uh, you know like drumming circles for example. Um, I think that would probably be a very beautiful thing, but I am absolutely not called to join one. Oh, and I know a lot of people who do, uh -huh. and they love it. Been doing it for years. Yeah, right. It's fun. It's fun, but. You have to be, you know, I think open or like, okay, I'm okay with putting myself out there in that way. And maybe you're not, and that's okay. Everything isn't for everybody. And that's. Well, let's, I mean, think about witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft's been around since, you know, man has been on the planet, right? right? And witchcraft probably, I'm not a witch. I don't delve into it. Uh, I'm fascinated by it. And, and I've done a pendulum reading on it, like, I don't know, 20 times because I really want to be one. <laughs> and I just don't think I am right. So it's, you know, but there's so many that are so powerful and it's, it's energy, just like what we have, you know, they just, they just uh, experience it in a different way. Right. So um, I, you know, I think. And don't get upset with, because I mean this from a place of love is I think you are a witch, just like I think I'm a witch. Now, that may not look like what you have in your mind or like the stereotype. Um, but, you know, there's Christian witches. There's, you know, um, you don't have to be like into dark magic or, you know what I mean? Or like casting spells. But if you work with energy and you're intuitive, I feel like that's what being a witch is. Why well, I, I agree with that uh, to a really large extent, because when you think about what, I mean, what would a spell be, right. but a transfer of energy of some kind. Exactly. Right. And so I feel that we're really on the, on the same page when it comes to that. Would I label myself that? No, but I absolutely am somebody who deals with energy. Right. Yeah, you feel it, you sense it, you know, if it's good or bad, you know, yeah. if it's for you or not. And um, yeah, it's interesting how we have all these different concepts. And that's why I call myself Sarah the Rainbow Hearted Witch, because um, it's like, I'm trying to embrace that word and be like, look, it's not what you think it means. It's not what we fear. It just means that you, um, for me, it just means that you're in touch with your intuition and you're in the flow with spirit and you're in touch with your soul. Um, and to me, that's really all it means is it doesn't mean necessarily that I'm like going out and working spells or whatever. And if that's the type of which you are, that's fine too. <laughs> you know, but even, even when it comes to that, I mean, if you think about, um, you know, blessing a candle, you know, if you went into a witchcraft store, you'd see herbs, you'd see uh, candles, you'd see all that kind of stuff. That is stuff that uh, even people that are more like myself, 
Um, I could bless a candle all day long. I feel like, you know, that is certainly within my realm of spirituality or my gift, you right. know, to, to be able to, you know, impart some energy onto something um, or to bless somebody or, you know, as an empath, most especially, uh, you know, I'm wondering how many witches are actually really powerful empaths that yeah. really, really, really pick up on emotions, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Most spiritual people I, I meet are empathic. Me too. There's, you know, it seems like the majority of people who are on the spiritual path are empaths. I wonder if, you know, just having that deep sense of feeling, um, maybe it gets people on the path faster or you, we just can't go along with being told what to do. We have to follow, you know, because we feel everything so deeply. Right. So if somebody says, okay, we'll just do this. It, maybe it just doesn't feel right to our soul. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think we really are tapped in in a big way to, um, you know, into our intuition. Our intuition is much higher than normal, right? Most of the people on the spiritual path. Is that true for 100% of the people? I have, you know, of course not. Right. Right. But there's a large percentage of the people on the spiritual path who have very well-tuned intuition. Um. You know, and even if you have intuition, I mean, you still have to be able to discern your message, right? Yeah. Which I think is an issue with a lot of people too. You get you get messages, but you can't interpret it. It's like reading tarot. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's you can make meaning of a card any way you want to, really. You can, yeah. A card can have like any meaning, you know. Um you could do a reading and I could do a reading and for somebody and the same person and we get two different outcomes because we could also be tapping into a different outcome or a different aspect of that person's life or their soul or whatever. Um, or we're, we're on a different, we're reading a different timeline. Um, so that's why, you know, it's telling the future with the cards can be difficult because we can jump timelines. We have that ability and we can change our timeline. Um, and that's why I like working with tarot because you can see, you know, what, where, where are you and your path and where are you headed? And do you like that? If you don't like it, well, okay, change your timeline. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's based on the energy that you have right now. Right. This is where you're headed based on the energy you have right now. If you don't like that then change your energy. Yeah. And you know, so historically, tarot would be read before battle or before, you know, to be like, okay, is this a good time? Should we go invade? Should we go do this? And if the card said yes, then they would. Or if they said no, then they would be like, okay, we'll just hang out a little bit longer and wait. <laughs> so, you know, it really is just about reading the energy as it is right now. But you can either, you know, be like, okay, I'm going to take this action and, you know, continue on this path or I'm going to, I don't like that outcome. I don't like that card. I don't want to keep getting the tower and the devil card. So, you know, I'm going to totally do a 180 in my life so I can start getting, I don't know, like, let's see, maybe the sun and um, the lovers there's, card or something. I don't yeah, know. there's like, you know, four manifesting cards in there, four celebration cards or you know, let's start pulling those. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I get all these high energy, you know, uh, major arcana cards with, uh, you know, these dire messages. <laughs> and it happens when you're somebody like us, though. Yeah. Because we listen. But, you know, for me, like, I, I'm not afraid of those cards because I know that there's even with the positive cards, there's a negative aspect. And with the negative cards, there's a positive aspect. And, you know, yeah. nothing in life is easy. Um, everything takes work. And um, yeah, so I don't know. There's no, there's really no 100% right, 100% wrong. Exactly. There's no 100% white, nor 100% black. 
you know, it's just these infinite shades of gray, right? Exactly. Right. There's a truth in there somewhere. Yep. And just like every religion has a grain of truth, you know, one can't be all right or then one can't be all wrong. You know, there's there's grains of truth. And I think every religion and and every spirituality and every practice. Um, but like we were saying earlier, is it for you? Is it right for you? That's the question, you know, but at the same time, don't hold judgment if it's not right for you, but right for somebody else. Just let them, you know, as long as they're not hurting anybody, let them have their experience, let them have their journey. That's how I feel about it. Everybody has their own journey. They came down here with some kind of contract. Exactly. That they need to fill. And they're not going off the planet until the, the contract is filled. So it's just like, you know, I, I have to give you the space to live your own life so that you can do the work that you're meant to do here. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to make it any harder on you. Right. Uh, by judging you. And that's, you know, that's where that, you know, loving compassion and non-attachment because, um, so many times we're like, oh, well, my way is best or I know best. Like it's human nature, right? And you want to like control a situation or control a person or control an event or worry. But like you're saying, what does that contribute? That doesn't contribute anything other than lowering the vibration. So if you can just hold space and say, you know what? It's their journey. It's their path. That's fine. You know, but that's hard. It's easier said than done. Like, especially if you are attached to that person and you, you know, um, you want what's best, you know, or I will tell you society. the older you get, the easier it is. The older you get, the easier it is to allow somebody to observe somebody's life with no attachment. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier when you're in your sixties than when you're in your thirties a lot easier yeah so it's just you know it comes with age um this ability to you know be an observer on somebody's life with no judgment mm -hmm. um, that's also a coaching concept too you know a life coaching concept is to be an observer um and not take on any anything from that person's life you know that's their life it's you know we're, we're here to talk about it and um, shed some light or create some kind of awareness or, you know, whatever we can do to help somebody move forward. You know, so it's one thing I never really understood about, you know, somebody going to a psychologist, you know, they keep talking about the past and all the wounds and all the stuff from their past. Right. So they keep them locked in the past. Right. And coaching's the opposite. It, it that's why I was so drawn to it as, as the spiritual person that I am, it was a good fit because it moves, it moves, forward all the time you know it's an accountability thing it's like you know if I'm talking to somebody about you know like a real estate agent or something and you know they're they're trying to make you know 10 deals by the end of the month and they've got you know 56 reasons why they're not making their phone calls or whatever and it'd be like okay well you know I hear all your excuses uh, but I really want to know how much money did you cash at the uh, how many checks with money in it did you cash at the end of the month and they'd be like um none okay then those 56 excuses that you just gave me are meaningless so it keeps people moving forward yeah. and out of their story you know it gets them out of their story and you know there's a you know that's the thing about everybody's got a story Everybody and does. right and the older you get i think the more that you just realize everybody's just telling you their story yeah. And sometimes it's super interesting. And sometimes you get to witness somebody's real dysfunction or their wounds are, are, are just manifesting all over the place. Right. And so it's this huge combination of being the spiritual person, being an empath, being somebody that can be the disinterested third party looking on somebody else's life and, you know, being disengaged from it and, and, uh, you know, you take all those skills and it's a lot easier when you, when you put all that together to show up as a non-judgmental person. It really is. I mean, it's just, it's not my place to judge. It's just my place to love people. I love that. I love that. 
Yeah. I I mean, get, at the end of the day, it boils down to that, right? Yeah. I still get to like, I'm, that's what I'm working on. It's boundaries. Like it's not, you know, I'm just here to offer a hand to help and, but it's not my life. Like I can't make decisions for people. They have to make their own decisions. Yeah. And you, and you don't have to have an emotional charge over it. Right. That's the thing too. I think as how do you move from the 3D space to the 5D space? You stop having those emotional charges um, associated with somebody else's life or something you hear on the news that you have no control over and it just gives you this emotional charge. And so all this energy is just pouring out of you for stuff you have no control over. Right. And, and just think about all that energy that we're giving to something that we have no control over. But could you imagine if we all put our energy into making our lives better? If we each just made our life, our own lives better, how amazing everybody else's life will be too, because you're living a better life. And so if your energy is higher and you're um, committed to making your life better and however that plays out, like, um, you know, we have a neighbor who he's retired and he commits so much of his time to this community and making it beautiful. And that mm -hmm. doesn't just help him, but that helps the whole community, the whole neighborhood. And, you know, he's a really great neighbor. And so like, he could just, he's in retired, he's retired. So instead of him making our community beautiful, he could just be at home watching the news all day and being yes. tapped, into, tapped into like wearing but he's not worrying about what's happening. I mean, I mean, maybe he is, I don't know him personally, but I just see that he's taking action to, you know, not only better his life, but better, you know, everybody's life in the community. And he didn't have to do that. Like he does it all for free. Um, so, you know, it's like, could you imagine if we all did that? Like, okay. So I'm, I'm looking into starting a Reiki share at our community center. So, you know, people can experience Reiki. That's awesome. So, you know, I'm like, what if we all just did that? If we all just worried about our own lives and our own maybe small communities or our friends, but not like with the attachment of, okay, but just living our life, I guess is what I'm saying. Like, and not getting caught up in, you know, whatever the news is telling us to worry about. Because why should we worry, you know, unless you're going to send money or you're going to help or you're going to enlist or you're going to change your voting habits, what, what's the point of um, literally it's draining your energy, it's draining your life force by giving your attention to that absolutely true yeah if you can just make yourself happy um then how do, how do you affect everybody around you right so it's you know it's that compounding effect right you're happy then it spills over to the person next to you which spills over to the person next to them and and how how would this world be if everybody started their day like that exactly like, how I'm, how I can improve somebody else's day. Right. And, and consequently improve my own. Because yeah, if we really embodied ourselves, you know, for me being an empath, what I've really had to work on in the last 20 years and an energy worker is really embodying my body. When we talk about spirituality, we think it's about like out of body experiences and leaving our body, but that's not what it's about. Being spiritual for me has really been like really get in your body, really embody your body, listen to your body. What is your body telling you? What is your, you know, what is your gut telling you? Because your gut really is a bigger brain than your brain. And it will just tell you if something's not right, you know. Agreed. So, you know, or, okay, um, you know, is this good? Is the, you know, if we really just embodied our, our bodies, and lived a full human experience i don't think we could go around and be nasty to people 
I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't think we could. I don't think we could have wars or um, I think we escape too much with, you know, there's too much of a culture around drinking alcohol and do that for fun. Who said that's fun? Why is that fun? Like, why is getting out of your mind or body fun? I don't understand that either. I, yeah. Why? Why? I don't understand that. So, you know, it's like, okay, if you're going to the bar to like meet people or make friends, can you really meet people or make friends if, you know, I, you know, that's a whole nother discussion, but you know, that's the interesting thing is I think when you're starting out on the spiritual path, you have a lot of misconceptions and maybe for some people out of body experience is something that's helpful on their spiritual path. Um, but I know for me, it wasn't for me, it was definitely, let me just really embody myself, like really have a human experience. And the more human you are, the more you're able to connect with people at a deeper level, rather than a superficial one. Yeah, and the, what I find too, is the more that you live in the 5D world and let the 3D go, the less you can be superficial. Yeah. It's so meaningless. It's so meaningless. It's it's just like, you know, that's if you're sitting with somebody and have you know talking about a you know a baseball game or something and it has no meaning for you, right? It's just like, well, that's two hours of my life I can't get back. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? It has no meaning, and you absolutely don't want to engage. Right? Like, is is that really what we're going to talk about? Does that help you be a better human being? I mean, not every single conversation you have has to be this mind-blowing experience. It doesn't, but it's just, I can't do superficial well anymore. Right. <laughs> well, or maybe it's not even superficial or maybe you just can't be fake anymore. Maybe, you know. Well, yeah. You know, if it's a topic you're interested in, you could have the conversation for two hours. But if it's not something you're interested in, you're going to be like, okay, have a great day. It was nice talking to you. I got to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you know what? That frees you up to meet somebody else or do something you enjoy and it allows them. It, maybe they'll run into somebody who wants to talk about baseball for two hours. Well, and I think that's just honoring who you are as a person too. Yeah. You know, that's just not my thing. And, you know, that's okay too, you know. I don't have to care about everything on the planet. I'm only one person. I only take up a little tiny piece of it. <laughs> exactly. And it's not our job. And, you know, boundaries. No. So, Donna, we got to wrap this up. I think we've passed the hour mark. Okay. Um, but I definitely want to have you back on because I know we have so much more to talk about. If you would like, we could do another, you know, and if whenever, when you maybe when you come back from your travels we could uh, do another interview. Sounds perfect. If you're interested. I'm absolutely interested. It's been a lot of fun. It has been fun. I love talking with you, Donna. So thank you so much. <laughs> you're so welcome. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching my video. I had so much fun uploading it. I upload videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them out. I also have a buy me a coffee if you would like to support this channel monetarily. So uh, the links are down below and I will see you all next week. Bye guys.